Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at um, linear and exponential models along with the word problem. So we're putting all our ideas together now. Okay, uh, the first one here says a science experiment involves periodically measuring the number of mold cells. Okay, so we have a piece of bread. At the start, there were 50 mold cells. Okay, and each time a periodic observation is made, the number of mold cells triples. Okay, so the first time I observe, there's 150. Okay, since it said the word triples, this is going to be exponential. Okay, so we're going to have y equals a times b to the x. When it says make an exponential model, we have to write, not the formula, but the one with the numbers for this mold cell experiment. So I have to put the initial number in. And they said that there were initially 50 mold cells. So we'll put 50 for the initial. And what do they keep multiplying by? Since it triples, there's three times as many to the x power. Okay, so it's exponential. And I think this is the right formula right here. And we're going to fill out the table. So when x is 0, after 0 time has passed, so we're talking about the, in the beginning, there was 50. That should work in my equation. Let's see, 50, and then I have 3 to the power of 0. Well, of course, here, let's move down and close those. Anything to the 0 power is going to be 1. So we have 50 in the beginning. And if I change 0 to a 1, okay, after the first observation, it triples to 150. So we're going to fill out the rest of the table here. Okay, I'll do second enter. I'll change the 1 to a 2. Now there's, wow, 450 mold cells. And then second enter, let's say after the third observation, now there's 1,350 mold cells. It starts to get really big really fast. There's a lot of mold happening. Then we're going to say 4 after the fourth observation. 4,050. Wow, 4,050. Let's change the 4 in our calculator to a 5. Okay, if any of these calculator steps are confusing, make sure you ask me in class because this is definitely something we have to know how to do quickly. Okay, so the fifth time I observe, we're already at 12,000 cells of mold. Whew, okay. What would be the mold cell on the 50th observation? Okay, we are certainly not going to make this chart go all the way up to 50. That would be silly. Okay, dot, dot, dot. Can we just skip ahead to the 50th observation? This is the first observation. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. So the 50th one, all I would have to do is plug in x equals 50. So I would say y equals, let's get our equation, 50 times 3 to the power of 50. There's a lot of 50s here, okay? But we're plugging 50 in for the 50th observation. Do you think this is going to be a small number or a huge number? I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of mold. So I'll just do second enter. And I'm going to change the 5 to a 50. And now, how many mold cells? Oh my gosh. This is a really big number. It looks like 3.59. But it's times 10 to the 25th power. 3.59. Whenever you get that little e, that's, X, that's uh, scientific notation, that's times 10 to the 25th power mold cells. Okay, this is the correct answer. And let me just explain to you why that is so huge. Okay, so you take the decimal place and you move it 25 places to the right. So that's 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's how many mold cells. 1, 2, 3, cha-cha. Here's the thousands. Here's the millions. Here's the billions. Here's the trillions. Here's the quadrillions, the quintillions, the sextillions, and then the octillions. Oh, my gosh. Okay. What would you expect a graph of this situation to look like? Okay, since this is exponential, do you think that we should say the word uh, exponential growth or should we say decay? Let's say growth for sure. Exponential growth. Okay, and for exponential growth, the graph, the graph moves away away from the x-axis for exponential growth okay so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and draw some axes here like this okay now the beginning of time the beginning of time so we've got observations right here observations on the x-axis I make one observation two observations, three observations. Okay, so let's label the x-axis as observations. And then on the y-axis, this was my x variable, the y variable, this represents uh, the number of mold cells. The number of mold cells. Okay, so when we started this graph, we start at the beginning of time. How many mole cells do we start with? Like the y-intercept. We started with 50. We start with 50 mole cells. So that's going to go on the y-axis. 0, 50. We're going to take a look at this chart and we're going to plot these points. 0, 50. The next one is 1, 150. So after one observation, this is 50, 100, 150. Now we're way up here. 200, 250, 3, 350, 4, 450. So we're going to go by 50s. 350, 450. The next one after two observations, we're already up to 450. Okay, so this is exponential growth. It starts like this, really close to the x-axis. Okay, the starting value on the y-axis is very important. And then it starts getting out of control. I'm not going to put <laughs> 35 octillion on the graph. It definitely starts to grow real fast. Okay, so the important numbers I would need to see definitely show me the starting number 50 and maybe show me the first one okay this one you could fit for sure and maybe even the second one we can't fit much more than that okay let's go look at another story let's take a look at Julie she's gonna get a prepaid cell phone okay so she has forty dollars of credit on the phone and each minute of talking costs her 15 cents. Okay, so X is going to be the amount of time in minutes, how many minutes she talked on the phone. Okay, and F of X is kind of like your Y. So it seems like she has $40, and if she talks for a minute, she's going to lose 15 cents. It's going to go down 15 cents. It's going to go down 15 cents. Okay, so since the money keeps going down, that's linear. And let's use y equals mx plus b to go ahead and describe the situation. So the, the change, the slope here, is sometimes people like to see $40, and then it goes down 15 cents, goes down 15 cents, goes down 15 cents. Okay, 40 is the starting and the negative 15 cents is the slope. That's your M, and 40 will be the B, the starting value, the Y-intercept. Okay, so we can 
go ahead and fill out this chart. I know she starts with $40. After zero minutes of talking, $40. She talked for a minute. Now she only has $39.85. Let's type our equation in. Negative 15 cents times one minute plus 40. Yep, $39.85. Now I'm going to do second enter and change that to a 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And now she has $39.70. Then we'll do second enter, change that to a 3. After three minutes of talking, she has $39.55. I wonder how long she can talk till she's out of money. Then we have $39.40. After five minutes, $39.25. Okay, so it's going slow. Maybe she should send a text instead of talking, right? Find the value for f of 10. Okay, so sometimes instead of writing a y equals, what will happen is people say f of x equals negative 15x plus 40. Okay, so this is how you write function notation. A y is just like an f of x. And if I wanted to say f of 1, you'd put 1 into the f equation and outspits that answer. If I wanted to say f of 2, I put 2 in and then you get the answer. So it's just a fancy way of saying this is the f equation and I'm going to plug a number into it. So when they say f of 10, they want you to take the f equation and they want you to plug in into the f the number 10. And so we would write it like that, f of 10, which tells everybody I'm plugging in the number 10. We've done this before. We just take our calculator and we change 5 to 10. So my equation got written over. Okay, So this means she's going to talk for 10 minutes. How much does her card have? $38. $38.50. Explain its meaning. After 10 minutes of talking, her uh, credit is down to $38.50 after 10 minutes of talking. F of 10. Okay. Uh, Find the value of x. Oh, now this is a different question. Find the value of x that makes her f function 10. Find the value of x. So the question is how many, how many minutes? How many minutes of talking? And then she only has $10. Okay, so 10 is not the input. I'm not going to plug 10 in. This is the output. That's the output. I'm not going to plug 10 into the equation. I'm going to say that 10 is the amount of money left. So the equation that is, where's my calculator? Negative 15 cents x plus 40. What x number? would have the answer of how much money spit out? $10 left. How many minutes? And then the output is $10 left. You don't put 10 into the minutes. You put 10 into the answer here into the y value. We have to do algebra. We have to do algebra, guys. We have to subtract 40 from both sides. Negative 15 cents equals negative 30. Let's divide by negative 15 cents. X is equal how many minutes? Let's see, negative 30 divided by negative 0.15. I think the answer is 200 minutes. 
I think that's the answer. We could check. We could check. The question is way up here on the chart. Dot, dot, dot. If I had a chart that said 200 minutes, would that leave her with $10? Let's check. Let's take our equation. Let's take negative 15 cents, and I'm going to try 200 minutes. I'm going to plug 200 into the equation. Does that leave her with $10? It does. It does. It leaves her with $10. Okay. So I'm going to put a little star here because D was going backwards. Okay. We had to find the X by doing some algebra skills. Okay. What would you expect the graph of the situation to look like? Um, well, it's linear. It's linear, and it's not. Uh, it's not uphill. It's downhill. It's downhill. So I would expect a a line going downhill. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw the the x and y axis. Uh, how about the the y axis, the y intercept? What did we start with? We started with what forty dollars. We started with forty dollars there, and we have we have a negative slope. Okay, so we're gonna have the line going downhill. Forty dollars goes down, 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 down like this, and then eventually she's gonna have zero dollars. Right. This is ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars. At ten, let's see, right here. After two hundred minutes of talking, she had ten dollars left. So the x-axis is minutes of talking, and the y-axis is um, is money. Money. Um, credit on the phone, how much credit she has on the phone. It's going down, down, down. How can I figure out this? How can I figure out an x-intercept? A y-intercept you figure out by putting 0 in for x and then you get 40. But for the x-intercept I got to put 0 into the y spot. Let's do that. Let's put 0 in for y. 0 equals. And let's figure out what the x intercept is going to be. Okay? So I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. Negative 40 is negative 15 cents x divide by negative 15 cents. And what's the x-intercept? 40 divided by negative 15. Oh, 200. And I'll say 67 minutes. Okay, so she can talk for 267 minutes. And then she's going to be out of money. Okay, we're going to work on this tomorrow. So bring all the questions, put some notes here if you have them. Thanks, guys.